Hey everybody, how we doing today? Uh, good. good little Sunday, right? Yes. Um, thanks so much for spending some time with us on a Stop weekend. Stop muting me. Um, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna mute you, uh, Violet, because we want. Um, we're just going to be talking. We'll, we'll bring you in for sure. Everybody can talk. Actually, you can also use the chat feature down in the bottom. There's a thing where you can type in your chat. So if you have any questions while we're, while we're talking, you don't have to wait for us to stop or anything. You can just type your question here, and I'll keep an eye out for that to see if, um, you know, if, you, if you ask a question so I can chime in with that. But today we have a good friend of mine and actually my parents' next-door neighbor, uh, Silly Joe, also known as Joe Concilio, right? And yep. and he is a musician and songwriter and performer and a teacher and you know a dog owner. What I'm trying, <laughs> you know, I'm trying to add some things in, and a really really funny guy, a really really funny guy. We like, I, I mean, I I love working with Joe and just being around Joe. So I think you guys will enjoy that as well. Um, Hoy, my boys, chips ahoys. That's what Violet says. I've heard of you, Joe. See, Joe's a little bit of a local <laughs> celebrity too. So we're gonna have Joe. Do he's going to talk a little bit about how he writes songs first, okay? And um, and actually, we were just talking about how we've worked together on some stuff, so we can talk about how we collaborate. Um, and are your songs cheesy? Yeah, sometimes that's a that's and that's okay. <laughs> that's like actually what I think is really good of why, why I wanted to get Joe um, over here is because we've talked about kind of more like the serious side of songwriting, but there's also a whole side of songwriting where you could be a little bit silly. And in Joe's, Joe's case, you could be a lot of bit silly, right? Uh, call yourself Silly Joe. And yeah, yeah, so I actually didn't come up with the name. I would never called myself that. Um, it was a four-year-old named Nace Allen who looked at me one day and he went, Joe... You are so silly. <laughs> You're silly, Joe. See, and that's better when you when you get a nickname from <laughs> from others rather than uh, than make your own nickname, right? This whole group just went, "Yeah, you're silly, Joe," and then they just that stuck, you know. Right. So you got to believe what your audience tells you. That's right. That's right. Um, so, sim. Um, Violet asked her the song similar to like Weird Al's. Not really because he doesn't do Weird, Weird Al's are parody songs, right? Yeah, I don't do parodies. So parodies are a song that's already been written and then you change the lyrics and change some stuff uh, around to make it to to make it sound funny. Joe is all original music. So he starts from from no from nothing. And well, I'll actually, tell you let's I, talk about your process. Yeah. So what I start from is stuff that happens, okay? So um, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's always things kids say or, you know, something I observe and I just go, oh, well, that's, you know, and then I decide to write about it. So, um, and that's the difference with Weird Al. Weird Al is always starting with something that's already out there and is already yeah. popular. And I'm just starting with things Dad I Dad's made his own songs a couple times. <laughs> yeah, he does. And he's and actually, he's a really good songwriter. Um, he won a... Um, a Grammy for a song called Palindrome a few years back that I, it was just a brilliant song. So he's, you know, he's really talented, but that's different than the kind of thing I do. So I'll give you an example of what I do. Um, my daughter um, was, uh, I don't know, two and a half, three, something like that. And um, she got a hold of mom's lipstick. And um, so I heard um, my wife shout, Margaret Lois. And uh, I turned to Lizzie, the middle child, and I said, ooh, you know you're in trouble when you hear your middle name. So uh, then I just had to pay attention to what had happened and then write about it. So it goes like this. Margaret Lois likes to play makeup without mom's okay. She put lipstick on the dog one day and she knew there was trouble cause she heard her middle name. You know you're in trouble when you hear your middle name. Know you're in trouble when you hear your middle name. Know you're in trouble when you hear your middle name. When you hear your middle name, you better run. You better run. You better run. When you hear your middle name, you better run. 
You know you're in trouble when you hear your middle name. When you hear your middle name, you better run. <laughs> That's great. I love that. Yes, exact. Perfect example. Who knows what you're talking about? What, raise your hand if you know when they say you hear your middle name, you better run, right? I might turn that around on my parents. I might say, you know, Pamela Ann McGillivray, go by her uh, and, and throw it when she's when she's being bad, huh? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think that'll work pa- out too well. Pam- Pamela Ann, right? Yeah, Pamela Ann. That's right. Yeah, there you go. Pamela Ann like to spam. <laughs> that that one, yes, that rhymes a little. That, that rhymes easier than my dad's, which is Larry Ellis. Ellis doesn't have as as many. Good Ellis rhymes. is hard. Yeah. Yeah, Ellis. Yeah. Uh, so so I'll actually give you a, a clue on how I come up with rhymes. Sometimes if I'm stuck, I will just write down the word I'm trying to rhyme with. And then I will make an alphabet, A to Z. Yeah. And then I will come up with every word that, like, I'll go Pam, okay, Am, uh, yeah. Bam, Ham. Cam, Cam, like is in camera, or Can if I'm going for like a near rhyme, um, Damn, right? <laughs> Lamb, Ham, you right. know, Jam, Ram. Um, and I'll just, Keep going through the whole list until I find something that makes sense. Yes. Yeah, and no, that's good. Those And what uh, Joe's talking about here is what we call perfect rhymes, right? Is yeah. rhymes that rhyme, you know, um, cat and bat. Um, or cat and fat, like your song, Violet, right? Um, those are perfect rhymes. There's a whole other family of rhymes, and we won't get really into that uh, today, but... In songwriting, there's imp- there's different kinds of rhymes as well. Well, but I'll give you an example one, okay? Okay. Um, and and it's um, I wrote a song about um, it's called Uncle Knucklehead, <laughs> and it's about the um, the uncle every kid has who's like living in his parents' basement at 33. That's been and me. I've been that uncle. <laughs> yeah, I've so, been that uncle. <laughs> so um, anyway, um, I. It's kind of a country song, so I, I, I make fun of the, the twang. And so there's this one verse where it goes, Well, he goes out on the weekends playing his guitar. It's the only steady work he's had since that trouble with the lar. Ah, there's a good, <laughs> so, yes. Guitar and then lar. So right. you just kind of slide Law into it. Lar doesn't the... rhyme, but right. So that, and we, yeah. and we call that, um, we, we call that poetic license, you know, in, uh, that's, that's a term we'll use where the artist can, can break grammatical rules, right? You don't have to be grammatically correct when you write songs. That's uh Violet is writing a beautiful song right now about this cat. Yeah, she's already she's already written this song. So maybe we'll have Violet sing it at the end. We could have it's, it's Violet's already. So we're doing a songwriting competition, Joe, right now. Okay. And and uh the Rockdale Rockdown songwriting con- comp test. Um so all of our a lot of our students are writing their own songs. And that's why we're doing a lot of these clinics is to help them through that process. So, and then learning how to record it and learning how to play it. And, and so we're, we're being very creative and productive in our time. of. So let me tell you, Violet, what I like about what you're doing. You're writing about something that you can observe right in front of you. That's Mm -hmm. part of your world every day. And that's the best way to write songs. Because if you try to, I mean, I, I used to think, that I had to have some kind of exotic experience to be able to write a good song. The truth is you, you just gotta look around at what's going on around you because there are, there are interesting things, beautiful things, sad things, funny things happening like right at home. Right. And I write a lot about pets. So I, I have a song about a cat called Big Fat Cat. I got a one about my dog called Dumb Dog. Uh, I got a one about a fish that died and got flushed called Poor Gill. Um, so, you know, and and that was just, the fish died and got flushed. So, you know, you needed a song, you know. Go Poor ahead. Gill. He can't swim anymore. He just floats. And to eat is a chore. His belly shines 
at the top of the bowl. Mom said he can't stay there no more. <laughs> so that's great. The other thing is, I'm just describing stuff, which which is Violet. I see in your lyrics, you're just describing things, and a lot of times. Just describing what's happening is very, very connective because people can see it, they can hear it, they can smell it, they can touch it. So like the right. cat licking the bowl appeals to all kinds of senses. So not only is your audience going to get the sound of the song, they're also going to get the visual of the cat licking the bowl and all the other, and the, and the texture, because everybody, anybody who's been around a cat knows there's lots of textures with cats. Right, right. Um, and, yeah. and then if you can find like some kind of a joke to throw in to kind of hold the whole thing together, like I, I've had this idea and if you can make it work, make it work because I haven't been able to make it work yet. Yeah. But I have an idea for a song called Every Cat Has an Evil Plan. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> yeah, like the textures you were talking about, there's a uh, Shel Silverstein, uh, mm -hmm. the Sandpaper Kisses, right? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Sandpaper yeah, exactly. kisses on a cheek or a chin. That is a way for yeah. a day to begin. Sandpaper kisses with a cuddle or a purr. I have an alarm clock covered with fur. Look, I still remember that from when I was like, probably like Yurga, all the like Noah, Noah's age. Yeah. I'm thinking about as so yeah. a good poem or song will stick with you for life. That's yeah. the, that's the amazing thing. I mean, even in very old age, some of like my grandmother, she couldn't remember a lot of things, but she could remember music and she could remember things from her childhood. So these are things that we hold on to for life. Um, yeah. So the, the other thing is, is sometimes uh, if you have an ironic or sarcastic sense of humor, you just put it into a song. Like I'll, I'll this is a song that I just started writing like a couple days ago. And it's um, because I was driving through media. How many of you know the town? Who knows media? media? Okay. Yeah. So there used to be this really cool store on the corner. Um, oh, I can't think of the name of it right now, but they turned it into a nail salon. It was this great gift yeah, store. Yeah, Quincy's. Quincy's. Quincy's, right. Quincy's is yeah, now a nail that salon. Yeah, beautiful facade, the like yeah, oak and facade. They, yeah, and they and painted now it like, like white or something. Like yeah, it's totally. Like a, it's, right. Oh, I know. Awful. It, I I loved that facade and it's yeah. completely different now. They totally wrecked it. So anyway, this is this is what you know that day came into my head and this is for my friend with the Ramones t-shirt, ready? It goes like this. Media needs another nail salon. Media needs another nail salon. Media needs another nail salon so I can get my shine on. And see, these are quick little ditties that Joe, like Joe just gets an idea and writes it. And like, I love your style of songwriting because y you don't overcomplicate it. You just joke. Oh, you know, just like, that's like, what's the hook of the song? Yeah. Media needs another nail salon. Like, right. come on. And he starts right away with that too. Right. So he's, it's, it's a complete, I mean, one of my favorite songwriters, Bill Withers, he just he just mm -hmm. unfortunately passed away the other day. But speaking to what Joe was just talking about, I, I just watched a documentary on on Bill Withers the other night. Um, it was always about writing from something simple and mm -hmm. from writing something that is relatable, that is something everybody can understand. Like, for instance, Lean On Me. That song is just yep. about friendship. Yep. And just for being there for somebody. It's not, and he said, like, everybody wanted me to write love songs. And I didn't want to write, like, baby, I love you songs. I wanted to write friendship love songs. And I wanted to write things that, um, you know, weren't, that weren't being represented enough in, in a lot of songs at that time. So, so I, I remember meeting, um, um, Couple of I've, I've met some some professional folks, you know, singer songwriters and so forth. And um, oh, I can't think of the guy's name right now. Um, anyway, but I remember talking to him backstage. He, he he did this whole set of original songs, and then he finished it with a Sam Cooke song. And in his songs, he always had like 
three key changes and 12 yeah, chords. Right. And, you know, just, it was like very, very complicated stuff. And then he comes out and he plays the Sam Cooke song and it's like, darling, you send me, yeah. darling, you send me, honest you do, honest you do, honest you do. And it's three chords and it's beautiful. It's three chords, beautiful. And how many words did he actually say right there? Yeah. Darling, you, you send, send me, me honest, honest you, you do. do. Seven <laughs> words. Yeah. And it's that's the whole chorus. Is he just repeats it and does it over and over again? I see your thumbs up, Ev. You like that song? I love that song. So, so here's what I so I was talking to him because I I just managed to get backstage to talk to him. And I said, you know you write some really great songs, but man, then you play a Sam Cooke song and it's like, I'm going to go home singing Sam Cooke. And he goes, yeah. He said, a lot of times I feel like I'm writing to impress my guitar teacher. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that's, that, uh, that's, I, I've done that for years when I first started writing songs. I think I was writing songs to try and impress my musician friends. Yeah. Um, which worked out well in the beginning, actually, for me, because then I attracted all my musician friends to play my band. And right. they were very good musicians. So it elevated every, the, the level of playing. But then we kind of all agreed that I started writing more simply, more simplistically, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes I'm still a little bit, I could get a little, uh, a little bit out there. But, um, and, and they all started enjoying playing the songs more too. So even though they were simpler and their parts might not have been as more difficult, it, it felt better. And when a yeah. song feels good, that's when it's a good song. Like, right? Because that's what we're, we all do this. We all write songs and listen to songs because it brings feelings out in us, right? I, I always say, we, we call it playing music. We don't call it working music because when you play it, it should be enjoyable, right? <laughs> if you're working, if you're working too hard at it. Now, don't get me wrong. I mean, sometimes I'm working on music, but. I love to do it. So, well, it so, so there's the fun of it, and then there's the work of it. And I, I think the fun of it is is in the inspiration and where you try to get something to where it feels right, and you just go, yeah, that's it. Yes. The work is when you can't get it to that point. Oh, that's great. And then yeah. you have to do a lot of analysis. You have to say, okay, what's working? What's not working? How do I get from here to there? And some of that, like, I, I find that with GarageBand, I'm forever going, <laughs> well, okay, so I'm using this program Drumbeat, and it's close, but it's not exactly right. Like, right. you need to move something, and, and I can spend hours and hours and hours moving one drumbeat, you know, just to get it to where, right. it, to where it, it feels right, and that's the work, you yes. know? And, and I think that's where... Um, it just means you just gotta keep, you gotta keep plugging away, you know. And right. so you, you have and to be a bit of a perfectionist really good to get over those hurdles, though, right? Right. Too. And so you also like, have to trust that you will. Like you that's will, the other thing. Yes. You and will get there. You've got Joe, and you've got me, and you've got your other teachers to ask, and like because we, we've gone through that before. We can help you through some of those things. Now, when I say help you through, we can tell you how we've done it, but it's still you. You have to do the work, right? You're. you're but we can maybe give you a shortcut sometimes or... You know, so that's the other thing is, is collaborating. Um, so yeah. I run staff stuff past Jared all the time. The other thing is I have... So when I'm writing for Taproot Learning, they... Um, the process oh, we did, is... We, that was before we started recording. Why don't we talk about... Oh, we didn't talk about, about Yeah, let's talk about how Joe and I started really working together. Wow. So... I, I'm, the, I'm the guy who says yes, even though I don't have any idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so this was, uh, I don't know, four or five years ago. Uh, somebody asked me if I would write a song. I got this email from this guy saying, I'm starting this company. Can you write uh, two songs for me? This is what they're about. And I said, yes, because I'm the guy who says yes before I know what I'm doing. <laughs> and so then they gave us these specs, like we need a song about this. We need a song about that. It's got to be this long. It's got to sound like this. And so forth. So I said, sure, yeah, I can do that in two weeks. And I had no idea what I was doing. So the first thing I did was just started writing stuff on GarageBand and just writing 
notes. And then Jared and I ran into each other at a 4th of July picnic at his parents' house. Yeah. And I said to Jared, I was like, dude, I got, I need a studio. And he's like, well, I have a studio. I was like, I thought so. Let's do this. So we ended up writing these songs. Well, since then, we've done like at least a dozen more. Yeah. And we've got three or four more that they want in another month or so. So, um, you know, so sometimes when we're writing, we're being told, we're being hired to write something very specific for a very specific audience that has to have specific sounds and specific lyrics. And, you know, so, so I call it writing inside a box. So they say, okay, we need a song and it's got to do exactly this. Yes. And then you got to work with inside within that. And, and sometimes that's really difficult, but I forget, how do we start on the whole taproot thing? So uh, no, I, I mean, and, and like, I think that can be very difficult when you, um, when you have, when you're restrained, but sometimes it's also really nice to be restrained. Yeah. Cause yeah. It, Cause it gives you a, you don't have every possibility, you know, like there's a, sometimes it's, it can be crippling or very difficult when you don't know where to start. So having suggestions sometimes can be really great. Um, I, yeah. I mean, I, 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 that would be a good challenge for all you guys to work on is maybe we'll give you a suggestion that you have to write a song about. Like, I mean, you know, we could even do like Bill Withers, write a song about friendship. Well, and I'm just looking here at, at Violet's comment, vomits and faints. Yeah. I think that, there's a song. <laughs> That sounds I, like first day of school to me. Yeah. <laughs> Vir, first day of virtual school. <laughs> Violet is a very, very creative, a gr- creative one. And she's a great violin player. Um, oh, cool. So she's, she's our rock and roll violin player, which you may have seen some pictures of. Uh, she's quite the performer, too. So um, I know how we got on. We talked about collaborating. Yes, collaboration. So the very first thing Jared and I did together was... I said, I have to have this song and it's got to be like a rap and I need a drum beat and I don't know how to do any of that stuff. And he was like, well, and then he starts playing with drum machines. And then we ended up like making all these mistakes because things like double looped and stuff. And then it worked. Right. We were like, okay. So, but the, the whole thing was we came up with something that neither one of us could have done alone. Right. Because, you know, and we were, we were both out of our element. Yes. You know, like I was throwing kids songs at Jared and Jared was throwing drum loops at Silly Joe. And it was like, we don't know where this goes. So here's, here's the result of that. Bass. I remember there was some slap yeah. bass on that part yep. too. We like, it was, it was cool. But so what happened, I remember it was like a snare drum that when we repeated it, for some reason, something happened and it was making this swoosh sound before the yeah. snare drum. It almost yeah. was doing like a reverse snare drum, but it sounded really cool. And it was a mistake that we were like, leave it. So yeah. sometimes in through that experimental phase, um, you co- really, really cool stuff happens because by accident. <laughs> so the other thing with collaborating is, so I have, um, there's a songwriting team at Taproot. And so whenever we're working on something, we bounce it off of each other. Yes. And whenever you're stuck, you know, I just send it to the group going, you know, this is what I got. What do you think? And they're real, they're really good about being honest. Like, so, so I remember sending out one draft and getting back from Barker, like, um, I don't find this interesting. <laughs> like that was the response. And I was like, yeah. Well, okay, <laughs> but it meant start over. But sometimes it's like, oh, you know what? You just need to pick up the tempo a little bit. Or right. maybe I hear this sound or I hear maybe try this. And and having that collaborative group to work with is really, really important. Right, that like peer, I, peer review yeah. or something. You, but yeah, I know that sounds boring, uh, a peer well, review, but. You know, here's, here's the thing. Everybody's got this idea that artists sit alone in some room. It's like, I always think of it as the picture of Shakespeare with a quill in his hand by candlelight. You know, that Shakespeare's sitting there in the dark with a candle and he's like writing down all of the words to his brilliant place. That is not how he worked at all. He right. came in with a rough outline of a script. He had about a dozen actors he worked with, and they sat on stage and improvised. Huh. So it was more like an improv group where he was the director and he was writing it, but a lot of those lines were written by his actors. 
Interesting. So, you know, so the idea that Shakespeare was this like solo genius working at home in the dark is just not true at all. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's I, that's a cool story. That's a, that's a very cool story. Um, oh, and then Violet mentions a rap country. Actually, so that song that we were just talking about, Joe also had a rap written for it. Um, yeah. And my brother-in-law, Johnny, Johnny, <laughs> he's not he's not a musician, like not a you know, but he loves rapping and like he he's and he has like a good voice for it. So if you I Google like, middle-aged white guy, you find Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah, like he he he's a 32 year old who who lives like he's uh, in retirement sometimes. But <laughs> I, I, I appreciate that he does that. He's very good at just being. Go with the flow, cool John, right? He's very cool. He's cool John. But he's a great rapper. So we brought him in and you know, I think I think I actually did the outline rap first for him of like how it should sound. And then Johnny came in and laid it down and like Barker, the um the big boss man over at Taproot, was like that guy. Johnny. Yeah, like, he loves, loves Johnny. Johnny. <laughs> we want Johnny like, on everything. Every song. Yeah. In fact, there's another song coming out, and he was like, he's like, yeah. So like, okay, I like what you're doing here. I like what this is going, and then and then we need some Johnny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. And so we'll <laughs> get so we'll get Johnny. Like so, Johnny's done two or three tracks already. Yep. And we're gonna keep on bringing him in. So that collaboration and working with other people, um, because we all have our strengths. Right. Johnny could probably couldn't Johnny wouldn't have known where to start with any of it. We got it to a certain point and then we knew when to hand the baton off. Right. Yeah. Say, OK, you're going to you're going to be, you know, what do they call it? The anchor. Right. You're the anchor of the race. You need to bring this across the finish line. And uh, so that's a really that, that's a really important thing, too. And I, I mean, we do that. I collaborate. I end up actually getting to be that anchor man for a lot of people's uh, projects. You do that for me all the time. I, and like that's one of my favorite parts uh, is like to put that one little last part on a song that like just becomes ear candy. Right. Or like that. Yeah. It just it sticks with you and you're like, oh, OK. Like I, I get to my I have a lot of friends bands that call me in to play like a keyboard part that's literally they come in and they want me to play all over the song. And I'm like, no, it actually just needs like boo doo doo do. And then two or three things. And then I'm like, I don't need to play the rest of the song. You might think I you might want keyboards all over your song, but like I just need to add that little piece that little extra special thing that they're like the little spice at the end that really kicks the dish. So that's like the, the production end of things. And the yes. production end of things is one of those things where I feel like I'm still a beginner. And Jared oh, is outstanding Joe is at great. it. I mean, Joe, you, I mean, you come, you've gotten better and better with the, with the garage band where you come to me and I really like, there's not much work that I have to do other than I'm kind of that peer review and then just a little shimmer now. Whereas the in the beginning, I might have been adding more parts and like st I, I might be helping with the foundation. Whereas now J Joe's coming to me with foundation in the first floor and I might just need to put the roof on. You know, that's the, I like using the house as a uh, example for building anything is... Um, but yeah, so let's talk more about um, the songwriting process. Okay. Kind of, a, or or you know, who wants to hear who wants to hear a Joe a, a silly Joe song? How about we All do right. oh, just silly break the break up the talking with some singing, huh? All right, so I'm gonna give you an example of the simplest song ever written. It's three chords, and I wrote it in about a minute and a half. And I wrote it because I was folding laundry with my son, who was about six years old at the time. And I asked him to help me, and he told me that was boring. <laughs> and so I went into the laundry basket, and I did this. <laughs> and then he started laughing, and I said, what's so funny? And he pointed at my head. I said, don't look up top. And he pointed to the floor. And I said, don't look down there. And he goes, why not? And I'm like because under here, and I shook my rear end. So anyway, it took all of a minute to write this.
Don't look up top. Don't look down there. It's under here. It's underwear. Sometimes they're big. Sometimes skinny. They might be pink. They might be Jimmy's. So don't look up top. Don't look down there. It's under here. It's underwear. All right, if you want to sing along, all you have to do is repeat after me, okay? It's really easy. They cover up. They cover up. Everybody's fanny. Everybody. They might be your sisters. They might be your sisters. They might be your grannies. Be your granny. Sometimes they're clean. Sometimes they're clean. Sometimes they're dirty. Sometimes they're dirty. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about if it. If you're over 30, it's too late. So oh don't goodness. look up top. <laughs> Top. Don't look down there. Don't look down there. It's under here. It's under here. It's underwear. It's underwear. <laughs> Perfect. I love that. That was awesome. All right. I think we can open it up for some questions. If anybody has any questions, you can raise your hand and I'll unmute you and then you can ask your question. Okay. So Everett and Clem, go ahead. Do you have a record? Do you have a record? Do you have an album? Yeah, I actually have a couple. Um, and What's your favorite one? Hmm. So here's the thing about my own work. Uh, I don't like any of it. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a common never, artist thing, too. <laughs> yeah, so here's the thing. It, it never, ever, ever quite turns out exactly the way you want it to. So I have an idea in my head what it should sound like, and then what it actually sounds like doesn't match. So I'm always like, I'm always, when I'm done, I'm always like a little bit disappointed because I was like, well, I was hoping to get this and I ended up with that. And, you know, so, so, so there's, it's hard for me to evaluate my own, my own work. Um, I can say that, that the work that I get the most response for is actually my very first CD which I did on a very, very short time period with a budget of $500. And I didn't use anything on it that you couldn't find in my basement. So like for drums, we used washboards, um, tambourines. I had my kids sing the background vocals. Uh, there are times when I did uh, the harmony part and sang the wrong words and we didn't fix it because we didn't have time. So like uh, sometimes I'll be singing one word with one vocal and another word of the the harmony vocal and it's still in there right so the whole I, the whole thing behind it was i was asked to put songs that i was singing at summer camp onto a record i had a little bit of money and a friend who had a basement studio and i was like can we get this done before summertime and he was like yeah so we just went in just did it didn't think too much about it and then because it's so unrehearsed it feels like you're just hanging out and i think that that's why it works so well yeah that's that's and i think what joe brought up there too is using washboards and using creativity is doing what you can with what you have right you are so lucky now that you have these things phones and iPads and stuff because you have like all the tools that sound really really good right now um definitely check out the garage band clinic too that we just did yesterday we recorded that it's on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel you can learn to just play around in there and you can you can create good sounding stuff really good sounding stuff well right, and the next. mistakes are half of it like for example I just recorded a song and, I, and I'll share it with you Jared so you can share it with the kids Okay. Um, but I just did a, a home recording using GarageBand of a song I wrote a while ago called Superhero. Uh -huh. And um, I wanted to get this one sound on it. And I was recording a guitar part and accidentally turned on the microphone on my laptop. And it had all of this distortion and feedback on it. And so I ended up creating a 
like a bomb sound by whistling. So it was, I just used, I, yeah. I, made, I, I hit the wrong setting and I just went. And it sounds like somebody's dropping a bomb. Like it's because of the way, so like, you know, in the process, the mistakes are as much a part of it as, yes. you know, getting it right. The mistakes are a part of the process. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, I, and I tend to be a perfectionist as well with like, like Joe with recording. Um, so I'm always trying to make this thing sure things are pretty perfect. Um, I feel like that's my job is to polish it up. So people feel really good about it. But I also, then I just started playing in, in a band a couple, a couple years ago, Scantron and Scantron's whole thing is like, it's raw. It's, uh, it's uh, it's live and it's it's messy sometimes and it's the most popular band i've been in and <laughs> like it's the it's it they we've got we get the best response because of its it feels good like it feels like it's real it's not cuz life isn't perfect so why are we striving for perfect that's so so I, there's a songwriter and producer named joe henry and um, he does he he does a lot of he records a lot of artists that I like, um, and he records in his living room with the windows open. And he says he does it on purpose because he wants it to feel like a real sound, not like it's yeah, yeah. some kind of a can. So he just you know if somebody's cutting grass outside, they're cutting grass outside. Yeah, that's I mean you probably heard the church bells uh, earlier earlier on i get church bells f coming from uh from st francis de sales i live and my windows are kind of thin but i think it's kind of charm i actually love it i wake up in the morning to church bells and i think that's a really beautiful thing so all right next next we're going to do uh noah noah's question Oop, go ahead noah you are you unmuted there you go go ahead noah and then we'll co we'll go violet and then back to Everett and clem no, well, what's your question? Oh, I can't hear you. Um, hold on. Unmute. Go ahead, try again. Try again, Noah. We're not hearing you, Noah. Can you type your question in? If you could type your question in, um, we can we can go with that. Um, and while you're typing, we'll 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 get Violet in there. Okay, Violet. Okay, Zoomer. She said. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. She, she she brought me a she hit me with an okay boomer uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was like, I'm not a boomer. You can't use that on me. I'm not a boomer. Um, I'm an Xer hey. if you need to know. Yeah, right. So we've got no boomers. I'm a Gen Z. You're no boomers. I guess yet. whatever. You're like Gen V. You're your own generation, Violet. <laughs> generation Violet. <laughs> generation Violet. All right, what's your question, V? Do you like Pokemon? Do we like do you like Pokemon? <laughs> do I like po so my kids, my son loved Pokemon, and I actually put him in a song because um it's uh, called Are We There Yet? And so I, I, ha I was describing a car ride where my kids drive me nuts, right? So it goes like this. Joey's in the back playing with Pokemon. Lizzie's sleeping with her headphones on. Margaret and I are picking a fight. Don't cross that line. Hey, you're on my side. Are we there yet? Don't make me pull over. Are we there yet? Don't make me pull over. Are we there yet? Don't make me pull over. How far to the boardwalk town? There you go. So um, I am I am familiar with Pokemon. And oh, Noah's, um, Noah's question was, how long does it take to make a song? Yes. Oh, so well, somewhere between and you say to, to make a song. Um, go ahead, Joe. You can talk about <laughs> somewhere I'll, between I'll... three minutes and five years. Yeah. Um, <laughs> for me, okay, so, for so let me give you an example. Okay, I'll give you an example. The song, you know, you're in trouble when you hear your middle name. I had 
the first verse of that for a long, long time, but then couldn't come up with the rest of it. I just was kind of stuck. Mm -hmm. And so what I, I keep these notebooks. In fact, I got too many of them because I start to forget what's where, but yeah, yep. I keep, I use these marble notebooks, these guys, and I just write down I've got, ideas. I've got, a, I've got a little bit fancier one, but look, the same kind yeah. of thing, same. Yeah. Somebody so, bought me the fancy one, so that's the. <laughs> so sometimes you just, you, you write down what you have and then you just wait for the rest of it to work. You know, like in the case of the underwear song, I wrote it that morning and performed it the first time that afternoon. Wow. Because it was so simple. And yeah. in fact, this is how I did it. I was, I was asked to warm up an audience before a children's theater pr program. And I had actually written it on, on a piece of paper because I couldn't remember the lyrics. And I put the paper on the floor. I pulled it out of my pocket, put it on the floor and like put my foot on it and then just like kept cheating while I was singing the song because yeah, yeah. I really had written it like an hour before I got there. So, so sometimes it's really, really quick because it just works. Sometimes, you know, you're waiting for that piece. And, and my advice is just wait. Like it, there's... And, and unless you're on deadline like Jared and I are for Taproot sometimes, you know, the creative process doesn't need to be rushed. Now, when you are on deadline, then the thing is touch it every day. Okay, yes. that's the thing. Touch it every day. So every day, if you're stuck with something, every day, play it, record it, write it, do something with it, even if it's like 15 seconds. Because one of the things that happens is your, your mind will process the whole thing when you're doing other stuff. Like, I can't tell you the number of times I'm out like, you know, raking the yard and the idea comes to me. And that's because if I keep yep. touching on it, I'm, I'm asking my mind to pay attention to it and to give it some time. And things will connect when you're not even aware. I of wrote it. more songs when I was, I, I write more songs when I'm doing work that's not music. Yeah. And when I write, so yeah. it's when I'm raking leaves, it's when I'm doing something like something that my mind is actually, most of my mind is being taken up by something else that my like creative mind can actually work. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like you have to distract your, your working mind for your creativity, for me at least to, to work out. So yeah, <laughs> there's some songs that I've written that have been sit down and you write them. There's other songs. Uh, Joe said to keep in notebooks, but also your phone, um, your your like video or your, sorry, your um, audio recorder on your phone, your voice recorder on your phone. Just do a little demo, or even if you just have a little melody in your head. I, I was talking about this the last time we had a songwriting thing. I I just had a bass line in my head one time, and I just in my head like with my phone was just boom 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 boom, and I just recorded myself. I say it sat on my phone for three years. And then I, one day I was just going through it, and I was like, whoa, that was cool. I forgot about that. And then I sat down, wrote a whole song. So actually when I wrote that song, probably only took me an hour to write the whole rest of the song based on that little bass line. But it, it all started from that bass line three years ago. So like, how long did it take? It really took me 10 seconds to record it and then an hour to write it but there was three years in between. <laughs> so it's how much, like Joe said, how much you touch it, Noah, right? And how much you put into it um, is how much. And then the recording. And also I recommend, like Joe was talking about too, it's not just about writing a song, it's about rewriting your song and then rewriting that and then rewriting that and like keep on improving little parts. It's only done when you say it's done, right? Um, I mean, yeah, you I, know what? So even even then, like I have a friend who's a visual artist. Uh -huh. He said, uh, he said, you know, I'm never really done with a work of art. I'm just done working on it. Yeah, yes, I, I've just, I heard I, that one. Like, point where I'm you're just never like, done. You're just finished working on it. Yeah, right? it's like so I just, you just can't decide. I need to move on to the next thing. Yeah, um, because you can continuously adjust, especially when you get into if you go into the garage band stuff. We just gave like a very quick intro. But if you can tweak and tweak and tweak and tweak in there until, you know, the cows come home. If, you know, is that, I don't know. Anybody have any cows at home? 
expecting chickens. any cows. And yeah, Joe's got chickens. Uh, got chickens. Anybody expecting any cows <laughs> home? So so yeah, you can keep working until your non-existent cows come home. <laughs> um, okay, who ever you you had a question next, right? What was that? <laughs> what was the question again? Sorry, I couldn't hear it. What's your favorite band? What's your favorite band, Joe? Oh boy, I got. I actually have a lot of them. Yeah. That's um, so I'll just name a few that come to mind. Uh, R.E.M., Wilco, uh, Arctic Monkeys, um, Led Zeppelin, Rolling Stones, Beatles, you know, the classic rock stuff. So I'm rocking my head. I'm rocking my Hendrix. Yeah. My oh, Hendrix today. Huge Hendrix fan. And, huge and, Hendrix but, and look, fan. I'm starting to catch up to him, too. Um, well, yeah, we're all be- doing the rock star here these days because I, I can't get to a barber so <laughs> yeah. you know it is what it is <laughs> um very cool very cool uh, uh, are you have another one ever yeah do you like the Ramones silly Joe do you like the Ramones silly? I love the Ramones in fact so one of the things I love about the Ramones is their songwriting. And I know that they don't get a lot of credit for that, but they're brilliant songwriters. But here's one of the things about the Ramones. They made a commitment at one point to write a song every day. Yeah, that will. So one of the reasons they were so good was because I said, touch it every day. They wrote a new song every day. Now, not all of them are good. But if you write a song every day, you're going to have something. You're going to have some good ones, right? Yeah. And I mean, uh, th- I mean, one of my favorite Ramon songs, I know it's uh, probably cliche, but, you know, Sedated is super simple. It's yeah. three chords and then, a, and then a key change. But and then they repeat most of the song too. 20, right. 20 24 hours to go. I want to be sedated. Yeah. Nowhere to go, uh, what, nowhere to see, nowhere All to go. All dressed up and nowhere to go, yeah, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to be sedated. And, I mean, it's very simple, right? Very simple song. Um, I, I love that they can do so much with, well, you know, in, in some ways what they did was they rescued rock and roll from, from, from the producers, you know, because it, at the time, yeah. everybody was spending months years producing the next record layering everything getting perfect performances etc so that like rock and roll had become so sophisticated that it was hard for people like you and me to play it so like when i was doing rock and roll when i was doing cover bands people would say you know can you play a led zeppelin song and i would say did you ever hear led zeppelin play live because led zeppelin couldn't play led zeppelin live like it was too complicated yeah you know? right so but the Ramones, it sounded the same in the studio as it did on stage. It sounds just as good when I do it as when you do it. And that's, right. there's, there's a beauty to that simplicity. Yes. I, and, I, you know, go, going between my two bands, The Real Feel, our studio stuff does have a little bit different feel than our live stuff because we do spend more time in the studio putting synthesizers and little things like that. Um, versus Scantron is pretty much what you get is what you, like in the, on the album is what you hear maybe besides a tambourine or something like that, but um, so and and it sounds I mean that and they're simple sounds everything's like I'm using pretty much the same keyboard sound organ sounds are on the same songs too. So look a good a good song should sound good on one guitar with one voice, mm-hmm. um, and it won't matter how much you develop it after that but it yeah. like a good song should sound good just based on the chords and the melody and 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 the Ramones had that down yeah yeah uh all right who any other questions oh. <laughs> well, okay one more Ev. what you got one more time what'd you say we like your shirt, Jared. you like my shirt 
your sweatshirt, Shelly Brown. Oh, thank you. It's um, <laughs> it's a gray hoodie. It's very special. Yeah, yeah. I'm wearing a gray hoodie too. It's, 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 <laughs> well, thank you. Actually, this shirt was given to me by m one of my students, Mark Hull. I believe he gave me this, and he started at Rockdale when he was, I guess, 11 or 12 years old. Right now, he's in Spain getting his master's in composition. Uh, and he's making, like, music for video games and stuff. So, so, pretty cool. I'm not saying I could take credit for all that. He put all the time in to get that thing going. But uh, he's a good buddy of mine. He, he runs our summer camps and stuff, too. Hopefully... <laughs> We get summer camps this year. <laughs> um, all right, uh, V, did you want to do you want to sing a little of your tune? She, she's telling us to wait. Yeah. Um, no, it's no. I'm saying what? A what? What do you want to do? You, would you like to uh, sing a little of your song for us? Yes, and Joe, I would like you to make a rap version or a country version. I don't care. I won't copyright strike you. Just don't. Okay. Doors. That's the only rule. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead, V. Cue the catchy music. Do, 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 do. Oh, Bumble was a cat and he's really, really fat, but he is mine, so he's really, really fun. He likes to lick me. Oh, how silly. This is bald. How hungry is his soul? Bumble eats a lot. Anything on the spot. He eats his entire bowl. He eats until he's full. Wait, let me look up the lyrics again. Sorry. <laughs> ah. mm. Sorry. You know what? I, v, that was great. I think Bumble you got to keep them want. You got to keep them wanting more. That's the trick. That's the trick. Wow, so, that's brilliant. Yes. And and you know what I think you tapped into, is that. You said that it could be a rap song or a country song. It could. They have a lot in common. Yeah, look at that old town road. What like that? Yeah, you know, that one. I mean, they because they. I mean, they really do, are both blues based. Um, right. So they all come from from West Africa. That West African music made it over to the South in America. Oh. And you then, said that that old town road. You know, because people were uh, arguing about. Is it a country song? Is it a rap song? You know, that kind of stuff. But here's the thing. It's the chords. It's a blues song. Listen. Those are blues chords. Yeah. There is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. And then uh, I'm going to take my horse down the old town road. I'm going to ride till I can't no more. It's the same chords. That's right. Those All are right. rock chords, too. I, I'm not just stepping stone. Yep. So that's another good thing. We talked about this with James in our last songwriting uh, clinic. Is also just take a song that you already know, maybe. Mm-hmm. And just play through that and change the words, change the melody, change the rhythm. And now it's yours, right? We're all borrowing from the same, like I always say, there's only 12 notes. There's only 12 notes. Like after that, it's all repeated. And we only have so many, so many different combinations of those. So you're, you're probably not going to create something that's completely, completely fresh, brand new. If you do, it probably doesn't sound great <laughs> because... Because yeah, we're used to also hearing a certain type of simplicity. Um, so, so I'll go back to the Shakespeare thing because I I think of Shakespeare as a true creative genius, but also as misunderstood because people think, well, people think a lot of things that aren't quite true. So anyway, the idea of doing something original. All right, when Shakespeare wrote Romeo and Juliet, which is arguably his most popular play, mm -hmm. he actually was working off of a play that had pr been produced fairly recently in theaters in London called Romeo and Juliet. Now, the thing is, you've never heard of the other versions because they weren't as good as his. Right. But they had essentially the same characters, pretty similar plot. Um, what he did was he made it his own. He yeah. made it his own by making the characters more realistic 
He also shortened the time period of the play from like the original, it took like a year for the whole thing to unravel. And he put it into a couple of days. And the other thing he did was the moral of the story of the last of the, the one he worked from was you should listen to your parents or bad things will happen. And in Shakespeare's play, there's no moral. It's just bad things happen. We don't know why. Tragedy. So he, right. so yeah. he took you know, 95% of it from something else and then just said, but you know what? I'm going to tweak that and that and that. And now 500 years later, people still watch the play. Yep. That's very good. All right. Do we have any more questions at all? I think we're getting ready to wrap up here pretty soon. No more questions? Joe, do you want to play <laughs> us out? Do you want to play us out possibly with something? <laughs> so, yeah, that? I'm going to take my cue from Violet, okay? To pee or not to pee? <laughs> to pee or not to pee. Okay. I think so, you, you and Violet could collaborate on some, on some tunes here. So this is a song I wrote, uh, and, and when I first wrote it, my son was pretty mad at me. Um, but it was about family car trips where, like, you know, you get a minute down the road and you'd be like, Dad, I got to go. <laughs> so it goes like this. First you squirm and then you wiggle. Cross your legs and hold your knees real tight. Hop up and down, try not to giggle. Bend over, try to hold it inside. Maybe it was that big old Pepsi, or maybe it was that tall lemonade, or maybe all that junk I ate at Grammys. Now here it comes, I gotta say, I say. He looked like Violet said, what if you hold it in so tight that you explode? <laughs> that, that was very good. Let's give it all. Let's everybody give a hand. Yeah. Thank you. And Thank look you at the chat. Over. If you hold it in so much that you explode, pee and guts would be flying everywhere. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Violet, we are going to collaborate. And whoever hits you on the back of the head, tell them that that was great. <laughs> My dad, just me, my dad just bonged me on the head of a newspaper. <laughs> okay, y'all. Well, thank you so much, Joe, for doing thank it. You. Thank you, everybody. And we can't wait to hear what you guys start creating. Um, let us know if you have any questions. What well, if you else? hold it in until you explode? Okay, well, let's hold up, me. <laughs> um, so let's all give a hand for Joe. Thank you so much, Joe, for doing this. You're still there, right? Still there. Okay, good stuff. Thank you, guys. Um, thank you, everybody. And we will record this and put it up on YouTube and Facebook. So if you want to rewatch um, and jam out to some of uh, Joe's songs, oh, definitely find him. And your um, your website is Silly Joe Sings, right? Uh, SillyJoe.net. Oh, sillyjoe.net. Sorry. Yep, sillyjoe.net. Sillyjoe.net. Yep. And yeah, check it out. He does birthday parties, all different types of things. Not, well, I mean, and if you go right there, now. you can hear the song Superhero, which was done entirely in this room on GarageBand using this acoustic guitar and one keyboard. So you can see what you can do with GarageBand. There you go. See? And that's, I mean, that's all I have is, is I just have this one little keyboard here. 
that I can I play in to Garage Band. I mean, don't get me wrong, I have lots of other instruments. <laughs> <laughs> I have lots of toys. But what I've been trying to do is create how you guys would create with less instruments because I want to show you that you can make very very good stuff. It's not all the expensive toys that I have. It's it's what I know and what I've practiced. That that makes it so these things sound good most of the time. What's that? I'm laughing at the eyebrows. Oh. Very good. Oh yeah. Everett's hilarious. This was, I'm, this was a great Sunday crew. We needed we needed this, right? This felt great. I just love how the parents keep reprimanding the kids. Don't do that. Yeah, me and Joe are not the uh, we're we're the knucklehead uncles that are kind of like, yeah, go ahead, do it. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. All right, y'all. Let's peace out. Thanks so much. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Joe. <laughs>